top five directors working today such a big category what's my answer well if you asked me 10 years ago i would have said something like m night Shyamalan." oh how times have changed Hello, hi everyone. This is Alex from Helmer's Movie Mania podcast. My name is Alex Helmer. I will be your host. Uh, welcome back. This is episode two now, and today we'll be focusing on another top five list top five. Uh, with honorable mentions, of course. Today's list: top five top living five. directors. Big list. Uh, our biggest list so far, even though it's just our second. And then later we will be talking about Pieces of a Woman, the new Vanessa Kirby film, and we'll be talking about that just briefly. And so. Uh, my co-host today is going to be, you know him from last episode. Unfortunately, I got all the emails, all the messages. Unfortunately, you didn't get fired for this episode. I didn't replace him just yet. It is Alex Holmes. Alex, how are you doing today? I'm doing okay. Yeah. How about you, Homer? I'm doing great. Thank you. NFL playoffs have been treating me right, and I'm wearing my oh, yeah. Los Polos Hermanos shirt. Oh, uh, nice. I actually saw the, I saw one NFL game last night. I saw the, uh, okay. the Washington cool, football cool. team game. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, I hope Tom you're Brady, really happy you know, about that. Yeah. 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 And you are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm officially wearing my Los Polos Hermanos shirt, or as Giancarlo says, Los Polos Hermanos. That's my best Giancarlo Esposito impression. It's really bad, but um, that is it. Sorry for everyone who loves Giancarlo Esposito and was really insulted by that impression. But here we go. Top five living directors. Um, When I was making my list, I realized that a lot of my favorite directors are dead, which is very unfortunate. However, there are still a lot of great living ones. Um, A lot of great ones. Do you want to start off with your honorable mention? Oh, real quick. Ooh my mic i will not cut that out <laughs> um so before we get to the films before we get started remember it's really important please like like the video comment subscribe hit the notification bell to get uh, notified on all our movie related content i promise you will not regret it and please 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 it's really important that you do this we're just starting out we would really appreciate that you guys support this channel because we really think it could take off in a big way so thank you so much if you could do that and let's get started on the video. Holmes, do you want to get started on your honorable mentions for your top five top movie directors? Five. All right, yeah. So I try to narrow this list down to like my um, working directors, and also I cut out anyone who I haven't seen too many films from. So like, yeah. you know, Damien Chazelle, Greta Gerwig. I'd love to put them on the list, but I've only seen you know two or three. So um, anyway, so my number ten, I guess, would be uh, Terrence Malick. Um, then my next would be David Lynch, uh, oh. Coen Brothers. After that. Paul Thomas Anderson and Quentin Tarantino. I mean, these are all just, you know, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, are inarguably great, you know, directors that everyone loves, but you know, uh, there's a reason everyone loves them. Or I guess, except for Lynch and Malick. You but, uh, did, you've, you've uh, violated one secret or not secret. Now it's not secret. One sin. You could, you name, you na- a certain name came up in your, in your monologue that is against the rules of Helmer's Movie Mania podcast, named David Lynch. I'm not sure that's going to be allowed here on this podcast. Uh, all the other no, names, no. okay, Terrence Malick, okay, 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 David Lynch, you know, you know. Once we have a uh, movie debate, or I, I, for all of you listening in the audience, a Cinema Wars um, segment when we debate all things movies, you'll hear me get to go off on the name David Lynch. But today, let's keep well, it I'll civil. I'll defend him valiantly, okay? Yeah. I hope you will, because I will not be civil, and I guarantee you won't either. Uh, but great honorable mentions. So my honorable mentions, I'm just going to name all of them. Uh, Michael Haneke, Wes Anderson, Noah Baumbach, Thomas Vinterberg, who's only, I've only seen two films from him, but sorry, one of my favorite directors. Um, the Coen brothers, Ryan Johnson. Yes, I said Ryan Johnson. I'm really sorry. Actually, no, I'm not I, I, sorry. I'm, you know what? No, here. I'm not no sorry. Here, you know. Suck it. If you don't like Ryan Johnson, I like The Last Jedi, so uh, I'm just going to get out there before you uh, get a, th- a million subscribers out there. And then I say, I like Last Jedi and lose all of them. I'm going to say it right now. So you know, right now. Um, Spike Lee, Clint Eastwood. I know uh, we have a Clint Eastwood hater on our podcast right here. So, again, I-, I can't do anything about it. He's a hater. He's a hater. No, you keep him in honorable moment. mentions. That's, that's okay with me, I guess. Okay. I haven't seen his best work. So excuses, yeah. excuses. Uh, Edgar Wright, of course. Uh, Damien Chazelle, who I guarantee will make my top five uh, once he makes more films. Paul Thomas Anderson and Quentin Tarantino. So I will get started on my number five and my number four of my favorite living directors working today. So my number five director is going to be the great Christopher Nolan. 
Now, I wa- like everyone or most people watching this podcast today, I've seen Tenet, like most people, did not love it. Uh, I'm very aware of the multiple, I guess, the, the, the complaints surrounding Nolan's style in regards to his inability to create emotion and um, complex emotional characters. I mean, other th- I, I do think that's the ca- that's not the case in the Dark Knight trilogy. However, in most of his films, that's not the case. I would argue that he doesn't try to do that. So it's not necessarily something that bothers me too much. In Tenet, it did. However, in regards to most of his filmography, I mean, this guy is a, he's, he's one of the best directors uh, working today for sure. Uh, not a doubt in my mind. Uh, when you go over to his, uh, The Dark Knight, obviously one of my favorite films of all time. Uh, Inception, another one. Interstellar, amazing film. Uh, when you Visually, these films are just magnificent. Uh, Character-wise, they're great. And then plot-wise, you definitely have to pay attention to a Christopher Nolan film whenever you watch them, because yes, the plots are very talky, very expository. However, they're definitely worth it if you're able to pay attention, able to digest the information that he throws at you constantly with Steven Spielberg, it's a lot of experimental stuff in regards to like, he, he's able to explore so many different genres, even when the films don't turn out well. Like for example, the adventures of Tintin, he's able to, uh, he's able to experiment and, and uh, direct films outside of his, 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 uh, his area of expertise. Right? Yeah. Now we got, we got the musical coming next year. Exactly. West Side Story. West Side Story. I'm not too excited about that one, but Hey, Spielberg musical, who knows? I'm yeah. not, I'm not a fan of the original West Side, West Side Story, but uh, who knows? Neither Home, I, so but, yeah. year five and your number four. All right, so yeah, my number uh, five is gonna be Noah Baumbach. And, uh, oh, of course, yes. This guy, yeah, I just I love his uh, his sort of realistic uh, style. His dialogue is, you know, it overlaps. You know, it, they feel like real people who yeah. are talking to each other instead of like like a normal script kind of. And oh, boy, um, yeah, definitely. Love agree. his characters also. You know, Francis Ha, one of my favorite probably movie characters. And you got the mayor with stories where like just uh, the entire family is so fun to watch. He's great cast always, you know, Ben Stiller in that movie um, and uh, Adam Sandler, both who like normally aren't, you know, great, but they deliver pretty tremendous performances in that. And then I think he reaches his peak so far, at least um, last or two year, two years ago now with Marriage Story, um, my favorite movie of 2019 and mm-hmm. probably his best film. But he also had The Squid and the Whale earlier in his The Squid and Whale is my personal affair. I love that film. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a, a really It's extremely uh, relatable. Movie. It's really yeah, yeah. all the dialogue and is so dark just spot too, on. So much yeah. darker than you can expect. It's yeah, no. Um yeah, and then my number four director is also pretty similar, uh Richard Linklater. Mm. He is uh he's gone his last two films have been kind of okay, you know, Last Flag Flying and uh, Where Do You Go Bernadette. But before that, I mean he's had some of my favorite movies like, you know, Days and Confused. You have um Boyhood, what probably one of my second top three favorite movies of all time oh, okay and then um everybody wants some also really underrated movie of his um but yeah i just love his uh his movies are very philosophical you know his characters kind of talk about life and stuff like that and um really uh just makes you think i guess and that's that's what i love about his films the most great picks all around all right so my number three and my number two so my number three is going to be the great martin scorsese <laughs> Now, originally, I thought that Steven Spielberg was better than Martin Scorsese. I went back and forth, but I do think that Martin Scorsese, although he's not ex- as uh, experimental, I do think his filmography in general is just mu- is much more consistent. Um, now, I'm not the biggest biggest fan of The Irishman. I-, I think it's a really good film. I just don't think it is one of his be- better ones. I mean, but that's saying something about his filmography, you know. The Irishman is a great film, but when it's on the lower end, of his filmography that says something about the man i mean he's just an amazing director um everything he's definitely one of the inspiration most inspirational directors um for me at least uh his use of music his camera movement his um just everything about his films um goodfellas and wolf of wall street i go back and forth i think both of those are such amazing films those are probably my favorite of his and then after hours is an, it's so it's incredibly uh, underappreciated underseen it's not a gangster flick it's just about a normal guy who just has a really bad day it, played by griffin dunn and then my number two is of course david fincher now, David Fincher is, uh, he just came out with a film, of course, uh, Mank, which is not his best film. However, it's one of his best directed films. I think we definitely agree on that one. Um, Mank is definitely a, a extremely well-directed film from every standpoint. Uh, the staging, the lighting, the vibe you get. He just, 
into integrates you into this uh this uh this forties world and he doesn't let you out of it. You're just totally captivated with the film the entire time. Social Network is probably my favorite of his. His filmography is very dry, which I which is why I really like. it's similar to Nolan, except except I think he does definitely a better job um with the emotional the emotional investment in his films compared to Nolan. Um uh, and it, his central characters are also very very interesting and he, of course he's able to build up tension very well um benjamin button is an incredibly underrated film i think that's in a very emotionally uh just just heartbreaking film um and i think it's one of his best the ensemble is terrific as well zodiac is oh my god that might be his most tense one i love love not, love yeah. zodiac yeah. it is so good i mean i can't get enough of that film i mean i'm a big fan of serial killer movies in general I'm a big serial killer. That's probably one of the best serial killer movies. Probably my it favorite. Is. I'd say. Yeah. yeah. Very. Oh my God. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. So uh, my number three is going to be Spike Lee. Um, yeah. I just think uh, you know there's no other director working like him today. I would I would say his his movies are always uh, kind of ahead of their time, at least in terms of like talking, bringing up you know racial justice issues and um, like do the right thing. You know, is still relevant today. Uh, that's probably my favorite film of his. I think it's. Um, and I just love the way his, um, he also has some nuance in his approaches to these issues. Like um, he, first of all, he approaches, he uh, talk, tackles kind of like issues that people don't normally talk about, like with the five bloods, you know, like um, the treatment of, of black soldiers during the Vietnam war. Like that's not, I've never seen that tackled in any other movie, but he also tackles it in nuanced ways. Um, like you need to do the right thing. There are no easy answers. And I just love that approach. Uh, the number two is going to be, um, oh shoot. Who was it? Oh, oh yeah, of course. Uh, Martin Scorsese is my mm. number two. Um, I haven't seen a movie of his in a while, and it's kind of I've had like a Scorsese drought. I guess I've got to get and watch another one, you know, to um, really fall back in love with him. But he's uh, definitely one of my favorites. I've probably seen the most movies from him after maybe like Hitchcock. Um, oh yeah, I, I just love, yeah, love yeah, all yeah. of his. I think I've seen also fourteen. Um, I'm pretty sure, but um, yeah, I just love all of his work. I mean, he's just. Uh, you know, Shutter Island and Cape Fear are on the lower end for me, but they're still entertaining movies. And uh, some of his best just can't be beat, you know, like Goodfellas, you know. Um, the Irishman, actually, I do think is one of his best movies. I know we disagree on that, but uh, I think it's really, it's, I, it's just amazing how he's so old, but he's still still doing it. He's still, you know, got that, um, <clears throat> he's still got that magic. And um, yeah, I love Taxi Driver, you know, Raging Bull. That's probably my favorite of his, Raging Bull. Um, the Aviator, I didn't love as much also, but, you know, he's entertaining while I was in the moment. And, uh, yeah, he just got so much energy to his films. Like you said, the soundtrack, you know, the camera movement, everything. He's just like, uh, uh, you know, you, when you watch his movies, you're like, yeah, this is cinema. All right. So great picks. Uh, so I will go with my number one now. Uh, if you know, well, if you, if you continue to my, see my videos, you'll know that I have an infatuation, not anything r romantic or sexual with this director. Um, he, I think Holmes knows this director is something else. He's one of my, I mean, he's, he's one of my favorite individuals in the world of filmmaking. Um, he's of course the great Woody Allen, of course. Um, I, I actually haven't seen any of his, oh, I've seen some of his new stuff, the, the good ones at least um blue jasmine and midnight in paris which i both think are great i haven't seen any of the recent ones like the one he uh made this summer it was oh, i saw the, the rainy Baskin day in festival new york. i haven't seen rainy recent. day in new york because selena yeah. gomez is in it i just don't understand what woody's doing over there i don't know why he's, he's, uh, she's pretty good in it honestly but it's not a great movie yeah I, I i will admit that he has lost a bit of his touch as he's gotten older however that doesn't stop me from putting him on this list i don't mean, say don't say touch with uh woody allen you know like, hey 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 I'm, let's, I'm, let's I'm be civil not... let's be civil yeah. the man was declared innocent in a court of law that's what i'm gonna go with no no but, I, i'm uh, yeah, yeah I'm on <laughs> that doesn't side. mean yeah. i you know he, the man's got to do what he's got to do if it's uh, within the uh within the guidelines the law okay you know yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna object, object. i have no position to do that but whatever um so yes let me get back on track uh woody allen of course he is not just my favorite in regards to his screenwriting i know we're not talking about that right now but his screenwriting he's my favorite screenwriter of all time 
it's not really that close either. I think he's definitely the most relatable. His comedy is very, it's, it's very down my alley. It's very sarcastic, really real world humor. It's not really uh, any screwball comedy or situational, co- or sorry, not su- very, um, it's, the comedy is very situational. It's not uh, based on uh, dramatic. It's, it's, again, it's not screwball. It's not based on wild things that are happening all around. Um, it's very, it's very, and it's also very, uh, Woody Allen, if you, if you know anything about him, he's very into uh, psycho, psychology, as well as kind of what death, life and death, various uh, psychological subjects. And when you take that and you combine it with his comedy, as well as his uh, rom-com approach in some of his films, you get some very, very, some themes that are so so there it's dark comedy but in a way that seems extremely realistic i mean uh some of his hannah and his sisters is probably my favorite of his i've seen that film four times uh it's one of my favorite films ever i love that film so much and woody a woody allen rom-com he's said in an interview that rom-coms today have definitely lost his lost their touch and i definitely agree with him when you look at a woody allen rom-com they're just so pure in terms of filmmaking whether you're talking about just the fact that he shot reverse shot is barely used in any of his films. Uh, he's, he loves to explore the, uh, the atmosphere of whatever room he's in. He loves his use of music is amazing. Just, and I'm not even in regards to his use. Of, he, a lot of his films are set in New York. I don't even love the city of New York, but the way he portrays it specifically in Manhattan, it just looks so, so it's it just, it looks like such a dreamy city. And then the purple rose of Cairo, which I think is a magnificent film. Um, it's Woody Allen is able to, I guess, draw tears from my eyes like no other. And that film is definitely in, uh, is an example of that. If you haven't seen Purple Rose of Cairo, I definitely implore you to do that. Um, okay, so yeah, my number one is, um, you know, you already mentioned him, David Fincher, of course. Uh, I mean, this guy is probably the most um, gripping director. He's like, his movies just like kind of he can't, uh, cast a spell over you where I can't take my eyes off of them just because they're so uh, entertaining and engrossing. And I'm just like... Um, I mean, it helps his subject matter is kind of like that serial killer type, you know, mystery. I don't really like those films, but um, he's definitely the best in the genre, I guess, at them with Gone Girl, you know, um, Zodiac is my favorite film of his. Um, that's a two hour and 37 minute film, I think, or two, yeah. something like that. And I could I could watch it for an hour longer. I mean, honestly, it's the, the world of the film, the atmosphere um, is just so uh, captivating. And um you know, and then Panic Room, which is, you know, one of his lesser films, but still highly entertaining. Um, that's just like, and he also shows a lot of skill in terms of behind the camera, like that film um, has some CGI sort of tricks, but I think it kind of works in that, within that film. And then in his other movies, he's always, he's a perfectionist, you know, he does the same take, you know, hundreds of times and um, it, it works. He definitely gets the best performances out of his actors. He knows where to put the camera um and his movies are so seamless i guess they're so smooth maybe that's that's one word for it definitely my favorite definitely agree so what is your favorite direct director working today please let us know in the comments below and i know i said it already but it is really important please like comment hit the subscribe button hit the bell icon to get notified and all our similar related content we have so much good content ready for you guys i know it's uh just the two of us talking about movies for an hour for now but we have so many good segments coming up we have so many plans ahead of us and uh plans that are going to make these videos look like child's play i promise you and uh so yeah uh so now let's get over to our movie of the day it is pieces of a woman starring vanessa kirby a heartbreaking home birth leaves a woman grappling with a profound emotional fallout isolated from her partner and family by a chasm of grief uh so it is directed by cornell mondruco and of course, like I said before, stars Vanessa Kirby, Sheila Buff, Ellen Burstyn. And so, Holmes, what do you think of Pieces of a Woman? Well, first, let me say this is this movie is going to do for home births what uh, Jaws did for swimming in the ocean. <laughs> uh, anyone who watches this movie and wants to get a home birth after, I mean, I, something's wrong with you. Um, anyway, so I, I thought it was um, kind of going off of that. I guess the first 20 minutes of the movie are pretty amazing from a filmmaking standpoint there's like this one long take and i'd heard about that beforehand and i heard the movie kind of dropped off after then and i generally agree i think it's um a solid movie but it kind of plays by a lot of familiar like melodramatic beats um i think it kind of picks back up at the end there's this one like uh family dinner scene that was pretty amazing to me and from an acting standpoint there's um great performances i think 
Kirby and Burston both deserve their nominations that I think they're going to get. You know, there's been a lot of talk about those two getting a nomination. And, and there's one particular scene with both of them. Um, I read in, in an Anthony Lane review in The New Yorker, it's kind of reminded him of, um, of Autumn Sonata from Ingmar Bergman. That scene, that movie also about a father, I mean, uh, it's true, a, yeah. a, a mother and a daughter. I definitely agree that, with that one. Yeah. So that was a, a great scene, very emotional. And, but I, I feel like in the middle of the, this movie, there's just so many kind of cliches in terms of just all the bad stuff happens. You know, you've got, you've got drug relapses, you've got, you know, illicit affairs, you've got, uh, you know, just all sorts of general, like everything that can possibly go wrong goes wrong. And it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't seem like it all stems necessarily from this, um, the botched like home birth. Um, it could stem from any sort of trauma or, or, or just like, it just feels like a general marriage falling apart, you know, not necessarily this particular circumstance. Um, but overall the filmmaking is pretty solid as well. Um, I think the, they know where to put the camera, you know, it's, it's kind of smooth in that sense. Um, the music from Howard Shore's okay. I feel like it's kind of used oddly in some scenes, uh, but it's, it's a good score. And, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't really that I wasn't ever bored or anything. Um, but really the acting is the main the main draw here. So uh yeah, what do you think about it, Helmer? Okay, so what do I think of pieces of a woman? So let me first say you are completely wrong on so many fronts. I'm sorry to say oh, that. Okay. You are completely wrong on uh so many fronts. This is a very good film. Um I I I, I was very I actually have the opposite feeling that I that you and a lot of uh reviewers have on the film. I actually found the first 30 minutes of this film to be a bit dull despite the 20 minute birth scene which i heard about before i found it more more just uncomfortable than anything else um despite its filmmaking prowess i think that was the intent definitely. yeah it was the intent yeah, yeah i just found it i just found it i also found that they could have given us more in before the birth scene in terms of building up the relationship between Shia, Bu Shia LaBeouf and Vanessa Kirby in order to make the fallout of their marriage a lot more impactful. Um, for example, Vanessa Kirby does not smile once in this film. I felt like if you had some of that at the beginning of the film, just her maybe just going to a, get a coffee with Shia LaBeouf, two minutes, it takes two minutes. If they, they could have done that. And because yeah, they had that one line where they say like someone, I think Shia says like, I wish you'd known her before, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I definitely feel like we would have because the character is definitely very, very doom and gloom for the entirety of the film, and so I definitely thought that could have been a, uh, a, a, a definitely something that they could have improved on. However, I do think this is a great film overall. I definitely love the second half of this film. Um, Vanessa Kirby did, gives an amazing performance, especially yeah, like you said, the dinner scene. Um, Ellen Burstyn is so good. Uh, she's honestly one of the best act. If you haven't seen Requiem for a Dream, just see, it. see just see it for her performance alone. She's so good, and this is definitely another film that uh, makes that evident. She's so good. Her one monologue uh, that she gives to to Vanessa Kirby's character is really good. And also, this film, unlike Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, this film is very subtle. There's a lot of subtle shots in here. Just um, the just a scene of Vanessa Kirby going to back to her office everyone looking at her and then just some guy sitting at her desk and when she comes when she goes to her office for the first time after her miscarriage i mean just that the subtlety of that scene you know the subtlety of just her going to the bathroom just just that and just the shot of just her feet in the bathroom you have just the subtlety of uh her her her, her mom played by alan burston giving her monologue without explicitly talking about um giving us expository dialogue about um her experience in the holocaust she tells it in a way that makes it seem like a a that like we were actually there rather than in in uh, when when she was a baby in the monologue she gives rather than just a third person uh, viewpoint of what what happened. Uh, and the film feels definitely very personal from a filmmaking standpoint. It's a very intimate film. Uh, a lot of long takes. Um, the close-ups were used really well. I love the shot reverse shot moments. I felt like they were used just right. And like, like I've told you before, I'm a close-up purist, really. I don't like close-ups being used when they should be used. Uh, and I thought they were used really well in this film. I, f I really loved uh, where they went with Sheila Buff's character. I thought he was definitely, it, he, was, he was just the subtlety of what uh, he was doing. And um, his kind of their, their, their fallout, I thought was uh, done really well. Especially there's one sex scene in this film or attempted sex scene, which was, I thought, very, very impactful. I thought it definitely, again, very subtle. It demonstrated a lot. The characters don't talk a lot. It's just, uh, it just shows how 
um, uh, sex scenes in general can be very, very impactful scenes with regardless of the sexual content. I thought it was a really impactful scene. I thought the entire film was it shed light on a subject that I wasn't too familiar with, which I really liked. And I'm a sucker for films that handle grief. I mean, really, films that handle grief can go one of two ways. They could either be really dull or very uh, dull, but emotionally gritty or just dull, dull in general. And I felt like this was definitely a film that had me emotionally invested. Um, there's also a court scene at the end of the film that I thought was really good. I thought it definitely added a new, a, a, it was a great way of kind of exploring where Vanessa Kirby's character uh, kind of ends up and how she's, uh, how she ends up dealing with the grief that she's had. There's another fly I had. There's a, there is uh, some themes in regard that, that uh, there's one theme in regards to an apple in this film. Oh yeah. That, that I thought was not, way too on the nose. It was really, was really badly done. That was, it was, uh, that was the one, that was one thing that I thought it definitely wasn't subtle at all. I thought it was done really badly, especially the last, very last scene of this film. I thought they, it, they could have cut that out of the film. I thought it was, yeah, that was way, kind of it, hokey. It was kind of cheesy and it was, it definitely hit on the apple theme a bit too hard and it was a bit too, <laughs> yeah. they could have, the scene before the, 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 that, that, that scene with the apples, I thought they could have left off on that note. However, that scene seemed a bit too, uh not just cliche but a bit too joyful but uh yeah it's a thumbs up for me now rating time holmes what is your rating for this uh, film six out of ten also uh you know solid it was it was enjoyable I, i'm glad i watched it but uh I, I will say it kind of fell more in the dull dull end of the spectrum for mm -hmm. me than the uh um the other end i guess whatever yeah yeah what about you i'm going to be giving it a 7.5 out of 10 uh, just better than Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, just in, in my opinion. So what do you guys think of Pieces of a Woman? Please tell us down in the comments below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell icon to get notified on all our latest content. You will not be sorry. <laughs> and uh, next video will be a great one, I promise. Um, Holmes, where can everyone find you? Um, just on my uh, my Instagram down below and my uh, letterboxed as well. I'll uh, put right right here or in the comments and, and in the description, uh, actually. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And yes, yeah, same with me. My Instagram or the Instagram for the uh, Helmer's Movie Mania channel will be in the uh, description of the video as well as uh, the link to my letterbox account as well as well as uh, the link to our website on the website you can find uh information about me about the channel about or uh some of my short films some of our reviews stuff like that so uh it's been great having you guys ciao